Hello YouTube, thank you for joining back to my channel. And in today's video, we will talk about Hyper-V checkpoints. We will try to understand the differences between standard checkpoint and production checkpoint. First understand what is a checkpoint in Hyper-V. It's an ability to save or preserve a state of a virtual machine. So if a problem occurs, you can always revert back to a previous state. It is mostly useful when you are doing some testing or if you are manipulating some codes or doing some R&D stuff. So it's always good to have a checkpoint, do all the research, and if you feel like you have to go back to a previous state, you can always go back using the checkpoint technology. There are certain types of checkpoint uh, in Hyper-V 2016 onwards, uh, which are as standard, production, production only, recovery, and disabled. So let's uh, quickly jump into the lab. Let's understand each of these checkpoints and how we can play around with these checkpoints using PowerShell. So in my lab, I've got two virtual machines running. This is Hyper-V 2019 and VM1 is running 2019 in the guest as well. So first, let's understand how we can use PowerShell to fetch the information for each virtual machine and what type of checkpoints are configured in each of them. So I'll first run the first command. This pulls up the information of each VM and it shows you the type of checkpoint is currently configured. So you can see here in VM1 and 2 I've configured as standard checkpoint. So first understand what is a standard checkpoint. Standard checkpoint is a type of checkpoint where the memory content of a virtual machine is preserved. So if you're running an application inside the virtual machine and if you created that checkpoint it will also preserve the content of that virtual machine on that particular state. So let's take a look how it can work in a live VM. I'll try to reciprocate it in, in, in my lab and then I'll show you how, how it can be done. So this is the virtual machine. I'm going to open some random applications and then we will see how the checkpoint is going to work with application uh, running on it. So, for example, now I have created two, um, I've opened two applications. Uh, one of them is Internet Explorer and Event Fever. And let me open some more, maybe some like disk management. So, when I open these applications, they are actually running on the RAM, on the memory of that virtual machine. So, when I go in and create a checkpoint of VM1, it's now creating the checkpoint. And it's about to complete. Okay, so the checkpoint is now created. So now, since this checkpoint is created, I can also, I can make all the changes in the virtual machine. And then if I feel like I have to go back to the previous state, I can always go back to this particular date and time. So you can see in the checkpoint, it has the date and the timestamp as well. So it was, it would be easier for you to switch back and understand at what time you had taken a checkpoint and if you want to go back to that previous state. So what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and close all the applications. So now nothing is running, nothing running on the RAM. It's just a idle VM running. And now I'll go ahead and apply this checkpoint. So when I say apply, that means I'm going back to the time when this checkpoint was created. So I'll just make a right click. I'll click apply. And now it's going to save the current state and then it will apply that checkpoint on that virtual machine. So we are technically going back to the previous state when that checkpoint was created. So now it's stopping the virtual machine. So this is mostly done, uh, you know, in a lab environment when you are doing some changes in the working server and, you know, you're not sure whether how, you know, it will behave with the server. So you create a checkpoint you do all the testing and if you feel like something has been messed up, you can always go back to the previous state using the checkpoint. That's exactly what I did. So now the checkpoint is now applied. I'll just open the VM and now you see all those applications which I was running previously, it is still there. So nothing has been lost. So all these things were actually captured in the memory and the standard checkpoint was able to capture the state of that memory as well and hence I'm able to see these applications already loaded, you know, in that exact same state. So this is the checkpoint, the standard checkpoint and how we can leverage it. Okay. So let's uh, understand how we can change um, the checkpoint type. So 
uh, we know that it's of standard now in in the uh, VM one and two. And if you if you would like to change the checkpoint type from standard to production, so we can use this commandlet set VM name of the VM and the checkpoint type is going to be production. So first run this. So now this is set and again if I run the previous command just to check if it got changed and it did. So VM1 is now running with production checkpoint. You can also do it uh, with the UI with the help of UI. You can go to the setting under checkpoint you've got two options production checkpoints and standard checkpoint. So previously we had standard now we reverted to production checkpoints. So now I'll just go ahead and delete this checkpoint because we don't need it anymore because we're going to try a standard checkpoint now. So I just deleted that for that purpose. So now I have uh, configured this to use a production checkpoint. And now let's see how production checkpoint is different than a standard checkpoint. So in production checkpoint, what it does, it does not capture the memory state of a virtual machine. Rather, what it does, when you trigger a checkpoint creation call, Hyper-V informs the guest VSS and says that I'm going to take a checkpoint and all the application writer running inside the virtual machine will be informed. So all the transactions which are going to happen, they will either flush to the desk and after that a checkpoint will be created. So this is more of a production ready checkpoint. That means if you have a SQL server running inside a virtual machine or for that matter, if you have Exchange server running inside the guest and if you would like to take a checkpoint of that uh, virtual machine, it is highly recommended to use production checkpoint. So when you take a production checkpoint, the VSS inside the guest are invoked. They're informed that the host is going to take a checkpoint. They do their necessary job. They inform all the writers that prepare your uh, flushes on, onto the desk and then a checkpoint is created on the host. So this guarantees that when you restore back to the previous checkpoint, the application running inside the guest will be running and it, it will be up and running fine. However, in standard checkpoint, this step is not captured. So when you take a checkpoint on standard checkpoint mechanism, you do not inform the VSS writers inside, inside the virtual machine. You just create a checkpoint without informing anything inside the guest. So there's a high possibility that if you're running a SQL or exchange, if there is a pending operation going on and if you created a checkpoint and then if you revert back to that particular state, there might be some corruption on that particular transition log or on the exchange logs. So standard checkpoint is not supported, is not suggested at all. It is always recommended to use production checkpoint for a virtual machine. So we'll take a, a checkpoint, a production checkpoint for this VM1 and uh, I'll show you on the UI as well that currently we are running a production checkpoint. So I'll just open up the console. I'll again open up some random applications. So I'll just open the test management again. Okay, so these are the current state of my um, guest virtual machine. I'll just go ahead and, and create a checkpoint. So now it took a few seconds and then it, it was able to create and you can see here on this pop-up message it says that backup technology in the guest operating system was used to create a production checkpoint. So this is a way of telling that I have invoked all the VSS writer inside the guest and informed them and then after that the checkpoint was created. So this is the checkpoint time. I'll again go back and I'll make some changes. I'll just close all the application. I'll create a, a text file. I'll just save it. So I just created a text file. Now I, I want to revert back to the previous state when the checkpoint was created. So what I'll do, I'll just do the same step. I'll just make a right click and I click apply. And then I again click on apply and then it will save the current state and then it will revert to the previous checkpoint date and time when it was captured. Okay, so apply checkpoint succeeded. I'll switch on this virtual machine now. Now you notice that this virtual machine is booting up. So it is starting from scratch. So whatever content we had in the memory, it was not captured. So this is the difference between a standard and 
a production checkpoint. So in production checkpoint, we just inform the guest writers that a checkpoint is, is going to take in the next few seconds. Guests prepare their writers and applications. Once it is informed, back to the host that all the writers are in, in a good state, take a checkpoint, host creates a checkpoint. So we are not capturing anything on the memory side. So whatever you had on the memory, it is flushed. Uh, but yes, the, the state when you capture the checkpoint is supported in terms of application backup. So all the application will guarantee that it will work fine even after you restore after a month or two or whatever time time timeline you have. So that is the usage of production checkpoint. There's another type of checkpoint which is production only. Okay. So let's understand what is production only checkpoint. So I'll just set the VM1 to production only checkpoint. Okay. And rather I'll go for VM2. So I'm setting VM2 with the checkpoint as production only. So I'll just go and run it. I'll again check if the settings got applied. Yeah, so VM2 is now uh, configured with checkpoint uh, production only. So what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and create a checkpoint for VM2 and let's see if it works or not. So I'll just again make a right click and click on checkpoint. And we got an error. It says that cannot be created. The reason being, we learned a few minutes back that when a production checkpoint is created, it sends a call inside the guest and VSS are invoked inside the guest. However, I informed you earlier that VM2 does not have any OS. So there's no VSS running inside it. It's just a dummy virtual machine is running, nothing inside it. So you can see it's, it's not even booting. So if a VM is configured to be have only production, only checkpoint, and, and if it fails, it fails the checkpoint creation process. So in the guest, there has to be a VSS aware OS. So that's the reason the checkpoint failed. Since we don't have anything inside the guest, checkpoint creation process actually failed. To actually uh, come around with this situation, what we can do, we can just use the production checkpoint only. So what is fancy in production checkpoint that it tries to create a production checkpoint, but if it fails to create a production checkpoint, it falls back to standard checkpoint. And you remember that in, in standard checkpoint, we do not capture the VSS content. We, we just create a checkpoint and capture the memory, right? So nothing is, is, is sent inside the guest and it does not check uh, anything inside the guest. So let's set the VM2 to run with just production checkpoint. Now it is set. I'll go back and take a checkpoint. See, it got created. Now, this time, we didn't get that pop-up message which says that uh, backup technology was used to take this snapshot. Reason being, it of course failed because production checkpoint is not going to work because there's nothing inside the guest. It realized it and then it chose the second option which is a standard checkpoint. And standard checkpoint is just going to capture the state of the virtual machine, including the memory. And that's how it worked. Now let's uh, understand the, the next uh, type of checkpoint, which is uh, type recovery. And this is mostly used uh, with the backup application. So when your backup is configured to take a backup of a virtual machine, uh, they also leverage this checkpoint mechanism and uh, they create a checkpoint which is of recovery type. So to be able to reproduce this uh, you know, checkpoint, uh, I'll have to use a PowerShell commandlet. So with the help of that uh, commandlet, I'll create a checkpoint. So this is the commandlet, a uh, new hyphen VM backup checkpoint, VM name, and consistency level is gonna be application consistent. So it is again a way of saying that I'm going to take a checkpoint of a VM and it should be application consistent. So whichever application is running inside the guest will be informed and it will be application consistent. So if you restore back to that checkpoint after a day or two, it is going to be consistent. There will be no corruption at all and application will be running absolutely fine. So I'll just create this uh, checkpoint now and I'll show you what is the difference like. So it is now running. Let's go back to the VM1. And you can see that it just created a checkpoint, which is like 536 and time is 536. So this is the checkpoint it got created. Now, if you see, uh, there's a difference between uh, the way it looks. So the checkpoint previously created, it has a different icon and this one has a different icon. 
and if we make a right click on the first one we get these options like apply a delete or export or whatever but if we click on this checkpoint we make a right click we just get these options export and settings and rename that's it we're not getting any option to delete it so this is a special type of checkpoint uh, which most of the backup vendor uses and uh, they leverage this checkpoint to take a you know backup of a virtual machine and they use the type called recovery so i'll explain uh, how to figure out you know the recovery type checkpoint so run this command let get vm name vm1 and get vm snapshot and you here you will see the first one which was previously created it was a standard checkpoint had it been a production then we would have seen production checkpoint here but now the one which i just ran with this uh, you know powershell command line it is showing as a recovery checkpoint so this is the type of checkpoint which i wanted to explain that this is widely used for a backup application and it is exactly the same like a production checkpoint it's it's going to invoke the writer inside the guest and then take a checkpoint and once the backup is completed these checkpoint are meant to be deleted so they do not stay uh, like that forever so these are deleted automatically now the question arises why don't we have an option to delete it manually we have it option we have the option for uh, the standard and the production checkpoint but we don't have it for a checkpoint uh, which is of type recovery the reason being these type of checkpoints are only meant for backup solutions so when backup is triggered it's going to take a checkpoint it will do its job and then revert or rather delete the checkpoint for that virtual machine so these operations are meant to be automated these are not meant to be done manually by any users hence these options are not available on this particular checkpoint sections so the best way to delete is run this command let get vm name vm1 get the snapshot name and then put the name of the check, uh, checkpoint name and then use remove vm snapshot so here uh, we see the name of the checkpoint as this which is of type recovery so i'll just copy the name of this and i'll put it on that commandlet and then i'll remove the checkpoint so i'll just run this commandlet go back here and you can see that merge has been started and now that backup checkpoint is deleted so that's how you get rid of a backup uh, checkpoint or rather recovery checkpoint from hyper-v and you can also use the same commandlet to delete the other checkpoint as well if you have for example the standard i'll just go ahead and copy this copy the name i'll put it here and i'll remove this checkpoint as well it's also gone now so this is how you can use powershell and uh, you know delete or apply or create a checkpoint and set the checkpoint types uh, for any given virtual machine so the last checkpoint type uh, which is actually a weird which is a disabled type so uh, basically if you set any vm uh, to have a disabled checkpoint type uh, it's it's like uh, telling a vm not to have any checkpoints so we in, we we take the capabilities of uh, creating or managing checkpoints for that virtual machine so that's that second example of vm2 so i'm going to set the vm2 to have a disabled checkpoint type so i'll just run this it is configured and i'll make a right click and take a checkpoint now you see it failed because checkpoint have been disabled it, it says it on the on this pop-up message that it is disabled you can also do it for any virtual machines i can also uh, run it against vm1 and you will see that it will fail after running it yeah so checkpoint have been disabled and it, it failed so this is uh, one of the options if you really do not want to have any checkpoints to be created for any virtual machine uh, yes you can you can use this option so these are the types of checkpoint we discussed and i'm going to put all these command lets uh, you know we use in this video in the description below so if you like what you saw uh, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up see you soon Thank you.